My research focuses on the transport and fate of chemicals in the environment, also their accumulation in uh, humans and uh, wildlife. And in recent years, there's been a particular focus on the fluorinated chemicals. The fully fluorinated chain has unique properties. It's both uh, water repellent and oil repellent. For example, in um, um, frying pans, it gives you this uh, non-stick coating on the frying pan, which is very useful, stopping your food from, from uh, um, sticking to the pan. I have a non-stick pan at home, to be honest, and I'm not worried about the, um, the food that I cook. Um, but uh, because the, the, the chemicals do get into the food, but they get into it and primarily from the environment, the amount of the fluorinated chemical, dangerous fluorinated chemicals left in the frying pan is very low. The manufacturers make sure they remove the toxic chemicals from the frying pan before it's sold to the consumer. You know, we shouldn't be worried about the, the fluorinated chemicals in the pan actually getting into the food that we're cooking. That's not really the, the, the exposure route that we should wor be worried about. But when you make a, um, the PTFE or Teflon that's in the, um, in the pan, you actually release large quantities of fluorinated chemicals into the environment. These days, this manufacture occurs in China, so at the moment we're releasing large quantity. If you buy a frying pan with a non-stick coating, you may not be exposed yourself, but you probably, as a result of um, using that pan, you're, you're causing a release of chemicals in, in China. They're at elevated exposures, so it has been shown that uh, um, humans could um, actually be susceptible to certain cancers, for example, kidney cancer and testicular cancer have been uh, related to elevated exposures to one substance known as PFOA. Um, but there are a range of different effects which have been related to exposure to these chemicals. So we should be concerned. I think also we should be very concerned about the high persistence of these chemicals because ultimately these will accumulate in the environment. Because of all the chemicals that we study, these are the only ones that I know which, which never ever degrade in the environment which, you know, from when I first started working on them, I, I realised straight away this was unique and that was fascinating. And I knew it was going to be a problem in the future. So kind of instinctively, instinctively, I think you know that it's wrong to emit large quantities of something that shouldn't be there and will never ever break down.